Hi, it's Mike D at Down Pepper Tree Lane. Please enjoy my garden on a winter's day. We'll do some bird watching. So the topic today is the rise and fall of Blondie. And Blondie is a group, not just one singer, Deborah Harry. <laughs> and there were buttons at the time that said Blondie is a group. They were really trying to promote that. So they came out of the New York punk scene in 76. They were on the ground floor. It was a really rowdy club in New York called CBGB's. And um, a lot of incredible bands came out of there, like the Ramones, the Talking Heads, Television, and Blondie. And Deborah Harry was actually working as a waitress in the club and uh, that helped keep her plugged into the scene and uh, make money and uh, until it was her turn to get up on stage. So Blondie, the first album came out, Plastic Letters in 76. Um, I remember they were in some rock magazines at the time, but not on American radio, not yet, not in 76. Um, they broke in England and their album became successful in the UK and they had a song called Denis Denis that was popular and in Australia as well. So other territories were on the cutting edge and they went over to England and toured and even though they were not an angry band and hostile and uh, slam dancing each other with violence, they were looked at kind of fondly as an American export and a lot of appreciation for Blondie in England. So they started having hits in Europe and Australia. And um, I kept reading more about them in rock magazines at the time, like Hit Parader, Circus. A lot of teens would subscribe to magazines before the Internet. And we got like a, a monthly or bi-weekly magazine to keep in touch with what's the hottest, what's the latest. And the critics were all over Blondie, getting lots of press well before they were on the radio. So finally, by 78, they released uh, Parallel Lines. <laughs> it was a monster. <laughs> it went to number one. There was a song called Heart of Glass. That is a kind of a pop disco trans masterpiece that's played all the time to this day. They nailed it. They nailed the song. And it was disco, but it was their way of doing it that was really modern. They put their twist on it. Um, they had another great song right after that called One Way or Another. And Debbie Harry, a very attractive gal in New York, had a stalker, uh, someone stalking her very seriously. And that's what that song is about, if you listen to the lyrics. And um, so Blondie was like really popular. Lots of kids had posters and T-shirts and, you know, they'd have the records when you'd go to their house and from the next five years on, the Blondie ruled the school, especially with the more alternative kids, not the straight-laced or square kids, the more edgy crowd. But also with, you know, athletes and cheerleaders, all of that kind of thing. Uh, so the next record was E to the Beat, and they had a great song called Dreamin'. You might want to look up. It's right where they should be in 1979. It was... New Wave Pop. It was a great, energetic song. And they had fantastic musicians in the band as well. It was a real team effort. And they were touring a lot. It was really exciting to go to a Blondie concert. I was still a little young. Didn't have my driver's license. But um, they were playing bigger and bigger venues. Getting a lot more television and press. And Debbie Harry was perfect for television uh, very comfortable in front of the camera and went on to do some acting as well there's a, a movie called video drone she did and um, many different acting roles that were perfect for her 
Um, by 1980, the coolest movie around was called American Gigolo uh, with Richard Gere. That was the hot movie to see that summer. And in the soundtrack was a song by Blondie called Call Me. Absolutely fantastic song. It fit the movie perfectly. And it was a massive number one radio hit. So Blondie was where it was at. And they were bridging the late 70s pop and rock and disco with the new wave and rock of the 80s. They were right on that cusp, right on that bridge. And uh, the perfect place to be for a band. So that was really a peak year for them, 1980, being on that soundtrack. And then 81, uh, they released this record called Auto American, and a fantastic song, kind of soft reggae, called uh, The Tide is High. And instantly catchy song. It, it's still played all the time, all over. Uh, if you go into a store, you'll hear The Tide is High. You know, it's evergreen. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, they could do all kinds of styles like a, a reggae pop. And then they did a number called Rapture, and that was uh, bringing in some rap from the inner cities of New York. And she was rapping and uh, brought it into the really cool stylings of that song. And that was a number one hit as well, Rapture, and Breaking New Ground for Blondie. Uh, by 82, things got weird because they should have been at the peak of, you know, New Wave and with MTV really getting popular. They put out a record called The Hunter. Um, the cover of the record, they just didn't seem happy. You could kind of look at the cover and see something's not right. The sparkle is out of their eyes. But nevertheless, uh, it was not very successful of a record. Um... I remember the song that came out was called The Island of Lost Souls. And I looked it up. It made it to 37 on the charts. It played it was played on MTV a lot. And at the time, that's what mattered, getting your video on MTV. So it was a kind of mysterious, strange video, but I liked it. It was very exotic about this Island of Lost Souls. And she looked great. I mean, Debbie Harry never looked better. I mean... She had this really long blonde hair and a kind of tropical outfit. She was just at her best. Now, the guitarist, Chris Stein, was getting ill at this time. He had some type of blood disease or something, and it really laid him out for years. And that kind of was the main reason for the demise of the group. But they kept promoting the album. The Hunter has some really good songs on it, like Dance Away, War Child. I, I think it's... Looking back, it's a really well-crafted record. It's just experimental, but that's what Blondie did, was be experimental. Um, Island of Lost Souls, it did go to number one in Canada and some different areas. In England, it did pretty well, like number 11 or something. But So it did do well in other territories, uh, just not necessarily the U.S. So in 82, they decided to go out on a tour, promote the album, and it was called Tracks Across America. And they toured um, with Duran Duran, who was just getting started, up and coming. And what a great show to see. Blondie on their way out, on their way down. And they were having trouble selling tickets. And Duran Duran on their way up. That must have been quite a show. And there is some video you can find online on YouTube of Blondie in 82. And they were still classy and really putting on a great show. They had to bring in another guitarist suddenly out of nowhere. But once again, Chris Stein was getting sick, and he was standing a little more toward the back of the stage. A little awkward, but nothing was said at the time. This was, you know, before Internet. A lot of bands were mysterious. They were supposed to go to Europe, continue the tour, but they canceled. Um, I think Chris was too sick. By that time, and they were having trouble with ticket sales. Uh, a lot of new wave groups came in in 82, like Culture Club and Duran Duran and Human League, and they kind of took over. It was a really fast-moving music scene. So every you know three to six months, it could change wildly, and 
just other tons of new wave bands came in and took over at that time. And Blondie kind of disappeared. There was no real announcement or anything. They just faded away. Debbie went on to do movies and uh, TV and uh, solo albums and stuff. And they didn't come back till 99, but they had a great song called Maria and a fantastic album called No Exit. So they had a great comeback, a really proper comeback. and went right to number one in the UK. And I would strongly recommend the song Maria to check out. And then they've stayed together as kind of a heritage band, kind of a legacy band, because they have such a status and are legendary. So they continue to release records and go on tour and are still out there. So that's kind of the rise and fall of Blondie. Um, man, let me tell you, in the summer of 1980, when Call Me came on the radio, that was the bomb. I mean, that was the stuff. And I was in California, you know, driving around at the beach, and um, it captured a moment. So anyway, check out Blondie, all their stuff. Um, my favorite song is Dreamin', just so you know, from E to the Beat. And uh, that's it. I'm Mike D at downpeppertreelane.com. Check out my shop, my vintage store with collectibles, and support my work. And like and subscribe. And go to the shop at downpeppertreelane.com. Thank you.